attitude and their presence on the floor. This is one of the most underrated basketball atmospheres in the country. Drink it in. Sandman, baby, it's so good. I love it. Fans of Blacksburg always deliver. All right, here we go. Virginia Tech with it to start. Grant Bazilli tried to kick it out for Darius Maddox and a turnover. Talad Cooper pushes, finds the freshman, and Jaden Henley starts the score. Bazilli looked like he was shocked to see a double, almost a triple come. Active hands for the Gophers, allowing a run out for an offense and struggles to score in a half court. Good start. See the starters for the Hokies. Sean Padula, the sophomore point guard, is the leading scorer at 17 a game. Hunter Couture, 42% from three for his career. starters for Minnesota. It is a very young team under Ben Johnson in year two. Bunch of freshmen out there. Talat Cooper is the transfer from Moorhead State. He's the point guard. Henley over Maddox. Tough shot. All four for Jaden Henley from Ontario, California. It's a tough shot. I mean, contested, fading away. You'll live with those percentages not in the Gophers' favor, but again, a nice start from Minnesota locked in in this road environment. Watching Virginia Tech offensively is so fun to watch. They are so smooth. They attack the boards, and Justin Mutz draws a foul on the Gophers. I love Mutz's approach. When that ball goes up, he is a warrior. He attacks that glass. Look at the anticipation. The eyes is waiting to find that thing. Nobody locates a body on the versatile big. He's long. He's athletic. He moves laterally well. That allows him to be one of the better offensive rebounders in the ACC. First foul on Dawson Garcia. And Mutz good on the first. Preseason all ACC second team. Sixth year senior. And he fits in so well in this community and this atmosphere. And you mentioned it off the top. Mike Young adores him. That is an active stat sheet. That is a lot of different stats being stuffed on a sheet. The kind of guys you like to play with. Don't need the basketball to have an impact. Saw the note. One of two players in the country averaging that stat line or better here in the first few weeks. Hanley drives on Maddox, who got a piece of it. Bend but don't break defense from Maddox there. Beat off the bounce, good recovery. Here's Maddox, he has stepped into a starting job this year. Very good score from all three levels. And traveling the call on Mutz, and another Hokies turnover. Mutz a little too eager on the catch. Wanted to challenge the 6'7 freshman See if he's willing to play physical basketball. Needs to be a little bit more composed before he delivers a basketball move. Minnesota 4-2, their best win over Cal Baptist last week in overtime out in Southern California. Then had a loss there to UNLV, the other loss at home against DePaul. This is the matchup to watch right here. Hunter Couture at 6-3 on a 6-7 Jamison battle, who is the everything scorer for this group. Just getting healthy, just getting his win. And that's what Dawson Garcia can do. He is versatile. He has to assert himself early in this game. He has to hunt shots to alleviate some of the pressure off of battle to be the lone dog. First year back playing for his hometown team. Started his career at Marquette and Carolina last year for Dawson Garcia. Maddox on the drive on the baseline and a tough finish. I like that from Maddox. He struggled to shoot the basketball from beyond the arc. Doesn't settle for a look there. Eager to drive it and get the best possible look. Seven apiece so far, first three minutes. Cooper got by Padula to the rack. Slow and steady. And a foul on Cooper on the inbounds. Mike Young well-dressed. Fourth year at the helm, the ACC tournament champions last year in his third season. Dude's one of the best coaches in all college basketball. His programs have an identity. These guys respond to him. You know what kind of basketball you're going to get from this group. And he's a joy to be around. Really enjoy every interaction I have with Coach Young, who's got something really going here in Blacksburg. Mutz on the inside. Oh. You told me today you think Mike Young may be top 20 coach in the country. I said it. Stand by couple hours later. Check with me before you, you throw those things out there. Sometimes I say it in confidence <laughs> and it's a hot take, but I, that's one I'll go public with. <laughs> Garcia looking for an outlet, finds Cooper. Seven to shoot. 
The point guard on the drive got stripped by Mutz and can't recover. Padula the takeaway. Padula has stepped into the starting job this year. Storm Murphy graduated from last year's team, and Padula is confident. Padula's going to hunt his. He's a guy that's got the swagger, the confidence. He likes having the ball in his hands making plays, and right there, just no respect to get up in his face makes a bang. Mike Young told us today at Shootaround, yeah, as confident as anyone I've ever coached. He said it borders on arrogance in a good way. I love that in a basketball player. Don't give me a timid guy out there on the floor. Battle. Wanted one from way downtown. He does have that kind of range. Settlement, though. Battle needs to challenge the defense. Run off some screens. Make them work. Find an advantage. Don't just sit there, play catch and shoot from well beyond NBA range. Padula nearly turned it over. Bazilli and Garcia went diving, and the arrow will give it to Minnesota, doing it with their defense so far. Just getting started in this ACC Big Ten Challenge in Blacksburg. And stayed by a pair. Their only loss last Sunday against the College of Charleston. Coach Young has seen his team offensively struggle to knock down shots these last three games. And I remember this from when I played for Mike Bray at Notre Dame. Offensive-minded groups that are elite with spacing and shooting, they're never going to be concerned with the struggles there offensively because they know the talent on the roster and how they're good there. What will draw the ire defensively, the effort on the glass, those type of things. But mostly defense, that's been the bugaboo in these last few games. Coach Young wants to see a better effort there. And I have seen in the half court, they're just not taking care of the basketball, allowing some runouts. Five points off turnovers for the Gophers here early. Yeah, a couple of turnovers for them. That has been the issue, meanwhile, for Minnesota in the early goals. Yeah, I love the effort here, the energy from the Gophers out of the gate. I mean, this is a group that's not used to being in a hostile road environment against the P5, and they look calm and collected early. They bring two more freshmen into the game, including Pharrell Payne, who has a bright one, future. Man. Mike, I love this kid. He is so raw. Look at his body, thick muscle, long athlete. Remember the name for Ralph Payne. That guy is going to be a force in the Big Ten. 255 as a freshman. I think Coach Fleck wants him on, on the football field yeah. on the gridiron. He's like a Brevin Span Ford. Uh, he's, he's in the right spot. Coach Ben Johnson's got a good one there. Battle attacking the closeout of Couture. And it's a foul on Hunter Couture, his first. Calls for the basketball, shows hands, confidence in Cooper to deliver it, moves it, and how about battle? Gets it back to him in the dunker spot right there, catch and finish. He said to Ben Johnson today, he was under recruiting. Why? He said three words, people are stupid. <laughs> so true. Got me out here on ESPN. <laughs> Somebody should have bird for that. Off the screen from Payne, probing for space. Garcia on the offensive glass, and it's blocked by Basile. Padula pushes and backs it out. Mike Young wanted to see more from Grant Basile, 21 in white, the right state transfer on that defensive end. And now he lost the handle, and he was the last to touch it. Second couple of years for Ben Johnson in his home city. So much turnover on the roster in year one, and the same amount of turnover on the roster in year two, but the difference, so much of it is young this year, whereas it was a lot of vets and transfers last year. Yeah, I want to go back to that play, though, from Bazilli on the post. Great effort on the shot block, but you catch down low, you got a five-inch advantage. Keep it high so Cooper, the guard, can't strip it. You got to win those one-on-ones down on the low block every single time. Chin it, you're saying. Keep it chin. Mike, if I catch on a low block against you, I'm hoping that thing. I'm not keeping it low for a mouse like you to take it from. That's my only chance. Five foot nine. Good defense on the interior from Lynn Kidd. Out of bounds with 4.1 to shoot. A very mighty mouse, might I add. Very mighty. Appreciate it. How about Lynn Kidd? He's coming on strong. Second year at Virginia Tech after transferring from Clemson. He played big minutes down the stretch last time out on Friday. They were so active in that game. They rode him down the stretch over Bazilli just because Lynn Kidd was just that good and that active. Good length to him. Physical. Has really worked in the weight room on his body as well. Again, four to shoot for the Gophers. Look at Couture. Battle Look with Couture, no breathing man. room against Hunter Couture. 
when Coach Young talks about Couture and Mutz, he beams this light about him because these guys are everything he wants in pillars of his program. Just the effort, just get into him. I got this. Best score on the Gophers, just uncomfortable. Couture comes off the screen, gives it up for Mutz, tried to drop it off, and Payne tips it away. Paralysis by analysis, being too, too, too unselfish. That's got to be a scoring play to draw a foul for months. You can't thread a needle in the interior like that. Too much traffic. Be greedy. So another Virginia Tech turnover. Torres Samuels, zero in Maroon, is coming to the game. The Dartmouth transfer for Minnesota. Braden Carrington, another freshman, gives it up to Garcia. Four to shoot. Samuels working on Couture. Forced into a tough two, back iron, and the rebound snatched by Kidd. Butts off the bounce, working on Payne. He is the king of the pivot down there. Minnesota wanted a walk, and instead, Butts draws a foul. Butts was determined to get back and get a shot off Minnesota after that last possession. Pain. He has the ability at six foot seven to push it in the break. One of the alluring traits of him as a basketball player. I thought he was working overtime there. Could have moved it, but I'd like the wherewithal to say I'm going to get a whistle, and he does. First foul on Payne. And Mutz back to the line. Hey, tomorrow, six more games in the ACC Big Ten Challenge, including a doubleheader over on ESPN. 7.30 Eastern, Illinois hosts Syracuse, then 9.30, number three, Virginia. Visits Ann Arbor and tangles with Michigan. Both games also available on the ESPN app. And how about the start for Tony Bennett's team? How about those who's? in the face of just terrible tragedy for that basketball team to rally around each other, bring some positive when that that that, that school and that, that town in Charlottesville really needed it. They won the best preseason tournament. Reese Beekman, two-way player, and Armand Franklin looking like the Franklin from the Hoosiers with the sharpshooting ability. Out in Vegas, great trip on that Friday-Sunday swing. Hots miss both. And now he commits an offensive foul, taken by Jamison Battle for the Gophers. Much was out of control. I do know that. Battle was anticipating that. Yeah, he lowered the boom with that left shoulder. Battle was in just good enough of position to take that. He was not impeding any path. It's the right call. He feeds off energy and emotion so well. You're sensing he's a little amped up early on? Early on, I think he's trying to do too much offensively. It, it, he's in a little bit of foul trouble, so let's sit him. I also think it helps for him to get into a more steady mindset here early. Locked at 11, eight minutes in. Josh Ola Joseph, another Two freshman with a strong one take one at Bazilli. That is too easy. They are trying to challenge Bazilli every time on the catch. They've identified him as one of the weaker defenders on the floor right now. Mike Young was saying he's got to adjust to this physicality at this level. Maddox can't tie it up, and Carrington runs down the rebound. Really good start for the Gophers. Three freshmen, a transfer, and battle on the floor for Ben Johnson's group. If I'm the Gophers, I'm trying to get Bazilli in a pick and roll, try and see if he can defend. Carrington can stroke it. Misfires from deep, and MJ Collins was out of bounds on the rebounding action. So Minnesota will have it on the other side. Minnesota's come to play early on, driving the basketball. Challenge is very young. Here's why. Six turnovers for Virginia Tech in the first nine minutes of basketball. Nearly half of their possessions, they've given the basketball away. And when they've given it away, Mike, the Gophers have been opportunistic on the other side. Nine points off of turnovers. When you turn it over at that rate, it takes away your ability to find a rhythm offensively. That has always advantaged the opponent. The Gophers have a belief now, hey, we can guard, we can translate, like, translate that into offense, and that's why they're competitive and leading in this game currently. What do you like about what Ben Johnson's building? That he, he wants to get quality guys. He wants to win this state. He understands the importance of doing it. They've got a ways to go there, but he wants to get quality guys that want to come out here and master their role, understand what he wants here, 
and that's coming. It's only year two. And they've done all this so far, first nine minutes, with just one bucket from Battle and Garcia, and that is an offensive foul on Jamison Battle. Good defensive anticipation sliding in there. From Padua, got to the spot. Looks like he was, he, he looked like he was set. I like the call. I'll take a charge there. I like the mindset from Padua. Coming help side to take that charge. That's a high basketball IQ play defensively. So battle is still scoreless. Minnesota by two. Elijah Poteet, the Rice transfer. Big body bruiser scores his first two. Elijah A lot more depth in the front court for Virginia Tech this season, even with the loss of Keve Aluma. Foul away from the ball. Poteet was bodying there with Pharrell Payne. That's his first 13 foul. Checking in Dawson Minnesota. Garcia checks back in for Minnesota. Now we were told pregame that Garcia a little bit under the weather. Ben Johnson found that out during shoot around. <laughs> yeah, flu like symptoms. Look, this is his demeanor, so it's really hard to tell. He's kind of got that sometimes he presence about him where he's kind of lackadaisical, so it's hard to read off body language. But yes, we were informed he's playing under the weather today. Drilled a three earlier, now back into the game for Ben Johnson. Henley working on Couture. Get him with that push off. Offensive foul, yep. In the arm bar to, to dictate space, and that is because of the That's ball pressure once again. Hunter Couture, he ain't the most That's athletic guy, but he is athletic. What he has is a, is a desire to be great and get up in you, never takes a playoff. High motor, that's what caused the turnover in the arm bar. Henley was looking for space. space. Yeah, he's got all sorts of experience, too, matched up with the freshman Henley. Minnesota will show this. They'll go to a zone 5% of the time, but Bazzilli can shoot it and stretch the floor. Bazzilli's made the most threes on this team. If you're going to go zone, you have to have an awareness of the most capable shooter in the lineup, and it is the big fella. I was been knocking him down at a high rate, too, to go along with that volume. Carrington off the screen from Garcia, who wanted it back. Ola Joseph. Makes his first collegiate three. Look, Bazzilli's understanding the scout. It's like, oh, Joseph doesn't shoot the three ball. But you dare him after a, a couple possessions. He's going to take that thing. Springy freshman from Brooklyn Park. 20 minutes northwest of the barn. Collins, freshman in the backcourt for the Hokies. It's saved by Poteet, and then a great find for Maddox, who swirls it out. Offensive rebound, Poteet. Carving out space. Gets the roll. Love the activity from Poteet. He is really injected life down low. Thought he shuffled his feet there. Should have been in travel, but yet still. Big fella held scoreless in the last few games. Coming out here and giving this team life. 265 pounder. Relentless. Garcia slipped. But for the cutter, Ola Joseph spinning. That is smooth, but a misfire from Garcia, and Collins runs it down. Maddox, quick first step, and he draws a foul on Henley. Elijah Poteet. Good minutes for Mike Young off the bench. 6'9", what'd you say he is? 265. 265. It's all muscle. He has got bodies flying off of him. There's some young guys in the lineup in the interior for the Gophers. They're not used to seeing an upperclassman put together like this. He's got guys bouncing off him. He's chasing the rebounds. He's making good reads on passes as well. Sets a screen for Couture. Back out for Mutz. High low with Poti. He's got the size advantage and he goes to work. And he's got a half dozen off the bench. Owen Joseph's giving up about 70 pounds there in a couple inches. That's a favorable matchup for Poteet down low. So Ben Johnson doesn't wait around. He's got Pharrell Payne at the scorer's table ready to check in at the next availability. 
Get a foul away from the ball with eight to go. And how about the minute top of the bench from the big fella? I'll tell you right now, you can't spell poteet without EAT. That young man is eating down low by Bonico. The easy bucket. Studio for how many overtimes of Carolina, Alabama? I left and I was able to make it home and a significant drive to watch the conclusion in the fourth overtime of that game. But did not make your flight here to Blacksburg last night. Did not. Took the drive from Charlotte to Blacksburg, put on a couple tunes, listened to some Hove, had some DMB in there, Chris Stapleton. I covered them all before I got here. I listened to all types of music. Huh. Before I knew it, two and a half hours was done. I was good. Just like that. Just under eight to go first half. Low scoring first half between Minnesota and Virginia Tech. And the Gophers get a much needed bucket from Pharrell Payne. Just check back into the game. And a double double last Monday against Cal Baptist. 15 and 13. First Minnesota freshman with a double double since Daniel Oturu. Padula could muscle it in past Cooper. I'll tell you what, Payne doesn't even know how good he is and how good he's going to be. Cooper pulls up. Can't knock it down, and a Minnesota foul on the rebounding action on Braden Carrington. Ah, oh, they got to let him play a little bit down low. 17 foul against the Golden Gophers. Why do you say that about Payne, that he doesn't even know? Because he's so raw. That body, he's just starting to figure out how long, how strong of a guy he is, and the punishment he can put on interior defenders. He's athletic. And he can change ends. Look, I'm not saying he's Bam out of bio by any stretch of the imagination. Way different skill sets. But Bam was very raw when he came in. I'm not saying he's going to be Bam, but I'm saying he can have that type of presence in a measured level here for the Gophers. Ben Johnson told us he got the job. Went and saw him the very first weekend and said, wow. And then some other Big Ten teams started snooping around and Ben Johnson got nervous. And that's how recruiting goes. You, you want a guy to keep being forgotten about so he can be your guy. But th that's one of the guys that they got to win in state. Maddox was good on both free throws, and Cooper responds with a bucket to trim it to two. You put pieces together for the Gophers. You get the pains. You want to try and find those three, four-star guys and keep them as a part of the Gophers program. That's how this thing takes off. There's no reason not to want to stay and play in Minneapolis. Not want to play with the investment they put facilities there for the Gophers. Maddox on a step back, on a miss. Cooper clutches the rebound. Cooper drives, floats it up top for Payne. Cooper very methodical with how he gets to his spots. He's got some, uh, some Derek Harper in him from the Knicks back in the day. Like, gets to his spot methodically. Patula responds for the Hokies. There's been a nice pace from Talon Cooper, the point guard for the Gophers so far in this first half. He's not overly athletic, but he understands the high IQ guy where he needs to get to. Gets two feet in the paint, defense commits, goes upstairs for the loop to paint. Got a pretty good look for Garcia, but back iron to tour the rebound. He's by three with it. Padula in transition. All the way to the cup. That's unacceptable defensively. you got to commit to the basketball before it comes across the timeline. Sean Padula making a pay. Gophers fighting, but the Hokies with the counter. That's what they do. Reminds me of those Nova guards. He plays in a triple threat position. Fundamentally sound. Elite with the basketball. Plays off two and makes the right read but understands what the game and what his team needs in moments, and he's delivered like that all season. I liked Storm Murphy last year, and he was great for this team. They won, they put up a banner here. They won the ACC tournament. But I knew once it got passed over to Sean Padula, they'd be just as good because he could play. Now look at that the cutout. That's the confidence we're talking about. I had my, my cell phone in my hand when they're going through layup lines. He pointed at me. I thought he was asking me to take a picture. I had my light on. He's telling me to turn the flashlight on. I said, I thought you wanted a picture. You're so cocky. I thought you wanted a picture. He looked at me and said, no, dude. I don't want a picture. I'm trying to help you out. What are you doing with your flashlight? I don't know, man. Figure it out. That's his second offensive foul on battle. He is still scoreless. It is his third game back from preseason foot surgery. Trying to get in a rhythm still. 
Hard hedge from Garcia. Padula moves it. Couture. Offensive rebound, Maddox. And back out for Mutz, and now Padula. Understand they're jumping. Got to make that quick move. Padula does a good job there to get that basketball moving. Take advantage of the defense, and it provides a nice drive. Good defense from Garcia, who went straight up. And then Maddox hits the deck for it, and the arrow will keep it at this end. Very impressed with the Gophers there. I mean, they are showing the double on Padula. So the Hokies very astutely move that basketball. But the Check Gophers the recover well and get on the ground for the loose ball. That's a nice counter offering from a defense, knowing what they want to do but not letting an advantage get them, despite the fact they're being aggressive defensive. You said it's called the jump when they come out with that second guy. Yeah, when the a ball. handler comes, you're jumping the ball. You're bringing two to the ball handler and Padula, seeing if you can get rid of it, try and generate a turnover there. There's an advantage if you move it quickly. Shot clock winding down, and Bazilli gets bumped Double by Garcia. Three, different Garcia. language for you, call it blitzing the ball. We used to call it jumping the ball. Good job there attacking a closeout from Bazilli. They understand he's a shooter, so they're going to close out with a sense of urgency, understanding with his skill set, he can blow by and attack the rim. Good read there from the big fella. Second foul out Garcia as well, puts Bazzilli at the line. Two time all conference at Wright State in the Horizon League. He scored more than 1,200 points in his career, and he steps into that starting spot vacated by Kebe Aluma. Knocks down both. So seven points, the margin. That's as large as the lead has been on either side here in this first half. Garcia sets the high ball screen. Now Carrington turns the corner. Cooper on the drive. Top fall away, not there. And Basile one arms the rebound. Seven-0 run the last two minutes. Padula can't add to it. And a soaring rebound from Carrington. Where do the Gophers go for offense? It's a great question. I mean, Garcia out there on the floor in battle. Run these guys off some screens. They're elite shooters. That's a catch with the defender right in front of you. Payne is a big body, set some screens. Couture got a tip, battle wins it back. Carrington rises, too strong. And Payne, the last to touch it. As physical as Payne is, he can single-handedly create advantage for a shooter like a battle, like a Garcia. They need to run some action to get them rubbing shoulders off a big screener like that to find some advantages. Battle's one of the best players in the Big Ten. Now he's still recovering from injury, that foot. He's still gaining his conditioning, but you've got to provide opportunities for your best score. Last year, 17 a game. Battle is scoreless here in the first half, and Padula, a goaltend on Payne, nearly swatted it right out of the air. Sends us to a timeout inside the final four in this first half, and Chop Padula's cooking. Chop Padula, low on the defense, asleep, spin the win off Garcia. Looking to bring it. I don't know. I got this good ball down low. I want the bigs to be fed. Talk about having success here. Two time ACC coach of the year, Coach Greenberg. As for this play right here, that's not a goal 10. You think so? Coach going Greenberg's up. talking about the bigs getting low. That ball's still going up. That's not a goal 10. That's an elite athlete blocking a shot. And that kid is going to be a star. I'm telling you right now. Buy stock early in his ability. So Coach is rising up for the jump shot. I, I don't know about Coach's jump shot. I know, not I, want know, the post I know he can clear. coach. I know he can analyze. I don't think Coach has a jump shot. He's scoring that on the block. Yeah. We got to watch what he's saying because they'll have another studio cut and take a <laughs> shot. We're just hanging in the balance. Oh, Payne is blocked at the rim by Basile. Padula off the bounce. Attacks. Fades. Gets the roll. You see what I mean? Two. Always in control on the drive is Padula. In traffic, not sped up like Fonz was talking about in the studio. Those were turnovers early because they were playing fast. Padula never falls into that kind of category. He's always in control. 11-0 run. Padula's got 11, and he has keyed this surge for the Hokies. Good luck. Carrington can't respond. Hit the rebound. It's all Virginia Tech. 
headed toward halftime. Post entry for Kidd. Basili. And knocked it down. It's okay, that's good offense. And it's because it's spurred when you got good offensive rhythm going, you're locking in defensively. We talk about Basili trying to be more active. You block a shot like that, you'll make Coach Young happy. Playing off two. I made that Nova guard comparison. Heck, Mike Young, Coach Mike Young likes his guards to play a similar style. It starts with guard play. They're getting it on tens with Padula currently. And how about Basili as well? Because this coaching staff has challenged him early on this season to be more physical and to defend. They will show that on film to him on repeat. He has that ability when he locks in and provides the fight. Battle is still scoreless. Now 0 of 3, and every shot he takes is a tough one. Couture off the wing, back for Padula. Cooper is fronting Basili with a size mismatch there. Padula off the hesitation on Garcia. Get the roll! Oh, that is gorgeous from Sean Padula. Love watching him play. One of nine kids. One of nine kids. He's going to find his. Pain the offensive rebound and a chance at back. three, and it stops a 13-0 run. Watch Padula always in control. Dribble drive against length. And Garcia. Garcia goes like 6'11. Gets it going right there and finishes over, and that's impressive. Garcia is a 6'11 defender. So what's he do? Pauses, uses the rim to guard, and gets it. Now watch Payne. This is why it can be special. Master your role. You'll hear Coach Greenberg say this a lot. Be a champion in your role. His is winning on the backboard, rim runs, being that screener as well as the dive guy. That's what you do early. Then you expand the role. Mike Young will take his use it or lose it timeout. We'll step aside briefly as well here in Blacksburg. Hokies up 11. The newest thing for Pizza Hut isn't pizza at all. It's cheesy, so crispy, loaded with toppings, and just $6.99. Enough for two, price for one. New Pizza Hut melts, just $6.99. I'll be like, shoes. In two seconds, Eric will realize they're going to need more space. Got to sell the house. Oh, open mm. houses. Or skip the hassles and sell with confidence to Open Door. Wow. Request a cash offer at opendoor.com. Mike Young told us today about his point guard, Sean Padula. He thinks he's the biggest cat on the block. We talked with Sean about his confidence. He said he had youth coaches growing up who would say, hey, that confidence is what makes you the best. It's also what makes you the worst. <laughs> Got great charisma about it. I had a chance to chop it up with him. Enjoyed the banter back and forth. He's ready to take over as a point guard of his squad, and he showed it early on. Grant Basile adjusting in midair. I've been impressed with Basile's Aggression is probably the best way to term it here on both ends. The shot block, but he's been driving that thing, not settling for the three ball. Ola Joseph hit one earlier, hit the rebound. You play the percentages there. Ola Joseph hit one earlier. Let's see how many of those he can do. Play off him is the right play. Padula working on the baseline. Basili moves it in for Kidd. Backing down on Payne. Kidd scores with the right hand. Everybody wanted Kidd to play off the other shoulder because there was daylight. He wanted to get into his move. That's repetition. That's where he felt most comfortable when he delivers. Had a career high 11 off the bench on Friday. Lead is 15 in the final minute before halftime. Cooper, much needed triple. He's got nine here in the first half. He needed that to stop the bleeding. How can they close out here? For the Gophers to make this a game, you need a stop. And you got time to get something going the other way. But you got to rebound clean. Uh, six and a half second difference between game and shot clock. It's got to be a high ball screen left. Padula decided. Comes from Kidd. Padula between the legs. Wants another. Can't get it to go. Payne the rebound. Ten seconds for Minnesota. Like battle right there jogging back. Run to a spot to get a walk, young man. Cooper has to force Sport one up with six foot eleven in his face. Poor execution. Battle's got to run to a spot and call for it. You got to be a star. You got to think like one. You've got your shots. You got to go find them. Big opportunity miss from the Gophers. 17-4 run for Virginia Tech to head to halftime. You heard from him earlier. It's through player. 
in the ACC this season very early, I understand, but took control of this game, scoring in a variety of ways to steady the ship and build a lead for the Hokies. All right, here we go. Second half action underway. Minnesota and Virginia Tech, 12-point margin. Virginia Tech closed that first half on a big run keyed by Padula after a back and forth beginning to the first half. Offensive rebound, but the stick back not there for the seven footer Trayton Thompson off another Jamison battle miss. He remains scoreless for the Gophers. I like the touchdown load of Bazil er Bazil Bazili early on. Offensive foul. With this new clock rule, it's a, it's a roll of the dice to be in that position. Let's take a look. I mean, Cooper understands he's giving up like seven inches right there. Yeah, I don't love it. I mean, you're rewarding a guy who's playing down low, undersized, and it wasn't an overly physical move. Play on. That should be a basketball move and finish. Six of the seven hokey turnovers from their bigs, from Bazilli and Mutz, who had three early ones. Battle has got to get going along two misses. They're not quality shots. He hasn't gotten a good look yet. Contested or no shot at all, majority of this game. Again, third game back. He missed the first four this season with preseason foot surgery. He told us today that the foot feels great. Maybe the conditioning, a, a couple more games before he's back at 100% in that regard. Couture, step back three. Doesn't go over Garcia. Battle. Crafty handle. And now Jaden Henley. Garcia just one bucket himself. He knocked out a three in the first half. Out for battle. Yes, sir. Three point pass that is good by 10. Need it. Maybe they can get their star going now. Nice to see him get the ball go through the basket here in the first minute of the second half. If you want a chance, your star has to be great in the second stanza. You know what he told us, too? He's got to ooze confidence. He can't show his frustration with some misses as Mutz answers. But on a young team, that's a big key for battle. And I haven't seen him lose that confidence. That's been the problem. Why it's a double-digit deficit going into the break was because he hasn't been that alpha Minnesota's needed here on the road. But by that same token, he hasn't been getting frustrated when he does miss, right? I want him to be frustrated when he's not getting looks. He ran off the screen right there. That's what you need to do. He found a good look, just couldn't convert. Now you go back and guard. The more sequences like that, the ball will go in the basket, because that's what he does. And they are force-feeding him out of halftime. They need to. Yeah, this is this advantage, Bazzilli. Thompson ain't physical. And the 210-pound seven-footer gets tagged with a foul that's against Bazzilli. Yeah, and this, is, this is the idea. Inside-out game with Garcia in battle. That's the formula for Minnesota and needs to be. Now here, he run off the screen from Thompson. Thompson did a fantastic job getting a body on Couture, who's been up in him all game long, just couldn't convert. Screens like that off a rugged defender to get you a clean look and build momentum offensively. Battle's taken four of the five gopher shots since halftime. These first two and a half minutes. Oh, Butts missed the bunny. And the bunny becomes a bear. The elite footwork to get him there, just couldn't punctuate. Cooper. Line. A lot of the scoring in that first half. Garcia keeps it alive along the sideline. Couture defensively, man. Master class of not biting on the head fake, moving your feet. Commitment to guarding on tens. Five to shoot, Garcia. Straight on three, swirls out. Tough shot. He gets no good offensive rebounding opportunity. And Payne can be a guy that can punish him there. Tech is plus seven on the boards. Basili spinning on Cooper. That has to be all day. Basili! Hey, He's got nine. That matchup is 6-9 versus 6-4. We call that the mouse in the house. That is a winning play every time offensively for the Hokies. That matchup cannot continue on in the second half. A lob for Payne, and Basili went up defensively. Out of bounds, and it does stay at this end of the floor. Talk about being connected as a unit defensively. Payne catches, one, two, three. Three guys converging on him, like Piranha and Murky Waters, to make a play. Basilia has really stepped it up defensively tonight. This battle on a, on, a, on a cut, right in front of the face. Instead, late shot clock for Cooper, with a lob for Payne, and he's blocked by Mutz. 
There's a lack of creativity on the offering when Payne catches. That's where the raw shows face. He'll be able to, as he evolves, catch that ball, play off to his strength, but be able to be more creative with the delivery to the basket. He's had the shot blocked twice. That's where the young talent can grow. How about the handle from Couture, but it rolls off the rim. So the it's move. like having more more looks to, to throw hey, out a post He's just defender. learning who he is. I mean, in high school at 6'9", you catch that, you're hoping on whoever. In college, Justin Mudson, lead defender, he's throwing that thing back in your face. Battle short. Maybe showing some tired legs. Ben Johnson played him 36 minutes and 34 minutes. His first two games back, that was not the plan going in. Cooper, floater. Two-point best is good by 50. Yeah, same formula. Formula we saw early in the first half. Turnovers allow a rhythm for runouts in the open floor. Nine for Talat Cooper out of Roebuck, South Carolina, and a third hope to turnover. Henley hits the gas and then blew a tire. Oh, no. And hopefully he's all right. Looks like this has got a relay so early on in the I mean, corner back composure. in Connecticut. Let me tell you. saying, why didn't you do it that way? When I, when I proposed, I was not nearly as composed. I did not execute as a level. The Justin Mutz is defensively in this ball game tonight. Don't believe me? Take a look at this sequence here. Coach Young says Mutz is the best defender he's ever coached. Beautifully illustrated right here. Shows hard on the ball screen. Recovers back to his guy. Payne wildly athletic. Mutz collects. Blocks the shot without fouling. You don't see that. Six, seven big that can guard one through five on the floor. That is an invaluable piece in the game of basketball. The direction it's going now. Don't believe me? Look at the NBA. Boston Celtics got to the NBA Finals. Boston guy Mike Monaco. Because those five defenders on the floor, interchangeable pieces. That is a hot commodity as you watch the game currently. Mike Young says Justin Mutz, he thinks, is the best defensive player in the ACC. He better be if it's the best one he's ever coached. Yeah. Padula, long two. Those are his first points since halftime after 13 in the first half. Garcia. Moves it along for battle. Whips one in for Payne. Now working on Poteet, and that's, that's a it. new look for Payne. Poteet is one of the more physical defenders you'll see in college basketball. Payne moved him around with relative ease. That is a freshman. That is when you look and go, oh, this ceiling is a very high one. How many freshman bigs do you see? 255, but, but good weight. There's an intimidation factor. Broad shoulders, he's got the length. Ah, Pachula, a pretty reverse. Just congratulated the guy yeah, who we just, just proposed. We gave a fist bump. Now, where do you go? You just go sit in your seats? Yeah, right there? side of your screen. There they are. The happy couple. He's dapping people up in press row. High fives. Garcia too strong. Bazzelli had it tapped away. I'll tell you what I'm doing. I'm taking my woman home after she says yes. That's just me. Oh, there it is. And you see it a lot at baseball Oh, he's got the family there. He's got good. That's All right, he's winning. Savvy move. He'll be good for life. He brought also the family. Good. That's good. He's got a lot of people to take pictures here. Were her nails done, though? They look like they were done. Hey, perfection. Does that indicate she was expecting? Expecting? What are you talking about? If you have your nails ready. Expecting a proposal? Sure. I didn't know where you were going with it. Mike, you're single. No, you got a lot no. to learn. Mutt's on the drive. Oh! oh! Got it back. And blocked by Payne. Third effort is good for Mutz. Almost saw a casualty. Wow, that was impressive. Mutz. Oof. We've had some near chance that would have brought this place down. 15 point margin, just over seven into the second half. Cooper wants a screen from Ola Joseph. Shot clock winding down, another runner too strong. Cooper got his miss, got it to go. Two point basket is good by 55. Talon Trying to keep them in this thing within striking range in the second half. There's just not enough offensive weaponry for them to keep up in the game. I mean, you got 12 minutes left here at 36 points. It's going to be a consistent struggle for the Gophers to reach 
and eclipse 60 points a game this year. That's just where they are. Couture, quarter three. Got 191 career triples at Virginia Tech. Virginia Tech's used to having three, four guys shooting over 40% for three. Right now, it's just Padula and, and Bazzilli. Once you get Couture in there, Maddox, then this group starts to look like who we know them to be. Foul away from the ball on the entry for the kid. Well, we showed you Justin Butts with a block. He wanted the champ. He wanted to end the game and call it right there on the spot, on pain nonetheless. If at first you don't succeed, dust yourself off, try once. There are four spacers around him. Everybody understands their role on that team. They're going to locate a block out. They're going to make the extra pass. They're going to help side take a charge. They're going to do everything to win. Unproven backcourt proved itself this past week. That's the best team in the country right now. Five-second count forced by the Hokies on Talat Cooper. Who's better? You're looking at me like I'm crazy. Who's better? No, I don't think you're crazy. Zach Eady alone is going to foul out everyone in the country. He fouled out Duke's bigs with the quickness. I went to the bathroom, came back, two guys were out of the game. Dude's got a size 20 shoe. Yeah. Not impressed by that. Sure people are. Much at the rim. 18 point lead for the Hokies. Cooper looking for somewhere to go. Battle's got three points on one of eight shooting. Garcia with three points as well, one of six from the floor, and currently on the bench. Six to shoot, Payne kept it. Now oh, he's got to roll. With now you got to locate Payne. You got to find Payne as the dive guy there. You're not scoring from the perimeter. You got to get that pick and roll and find Payne as the dive guy. Let him complete the play. Padula can't knock it down. Kid battled on the boards, but Carrington snatches it. And you got to run in transition, chase easy ones. You can't score in a half court. We have hardly seen any transition buckets from either team. Both teams play at slow tempos, and Cooper's got a chance at three. I like that call. AJ decide with the with the right call there on the low block. Shots called on Virginia Tech's number three, Sean Padula, his first 13th foul against the Hokies. Second from the one in position. It's the right call. That's a good move from Cooper down low. To line 55, Tom Cooper. Not only that, I think he was under. I think he was in the ring too. So Cooper to the line. He's got 13. Leading score. Kane's got 10 for Minnesota. Cooper, a floor general for Ben Johnson after transferring in from Moorhead State. Staring into the teeth of that. Mutz runs down the rebound. Mutz, ambitious on the lob. Still a long way to go in this one. Ten and a half left, second half. The margin 16. Hard hedge from Poteet. There's finding the roll man this time. Again, it was Cooper. Again, it was Payne. And that right now is their best option to score the basketball. They're not getting it from their best offensive guys. They're not getting it from Battle. They're not getting it from Garcia. A big screener like Payne and being a dive guy at least is getting you something to then make them guard inside to then open something outside. And this is the second worst shooting team in the nation from the free throw line. Virginia Tech, an attention to detail, a culture, a program. They practice free throw blockouts in their walkthrough today. You don't see that. The reason why they practice that, they know those balls are going to be careening off come free throw shooting with the Gophers. So be ready to fight and rebound. I mean, look at the parabola of the arc on that. You're shooting 55% from the free throw line. We have You're already an offensively an inept team. You, you can't leave money on the table like that, Mike. You just can't. And he said he tries to be hands-off with his team in terms of talking about it because 
he can tell that it is such a mental thing at this point. Yeah. So, so you practice it for sure. That's one thing, but try not to make it bigger than it is. Yeah, it's just it's just another thing that doesn't help a group that is young. It's in year two of Coach Johnson's tenure, and those are unforced errors, if you will. You, you got to convert it a better clip than 55 percent. And Payne is really a guy that needs to think, hey, my future is going to see me at the line a lot. And that's where bigs become special, the ones that make their free throws. And to your point, you noticed it about the Hokies right away in shoot around that they were practicing more than any team ever would on that. Yeah, absolutely. And it's attention to detail. Finding advantages in a game or, or taking away that's what could become a disadvantage. A couple quick fouls on Josh Ola Joseph for Minnesota. Maddox off a screen. He's yet to get going in this one. One of five shooting. Four points for Darius Maddox, 13 and white. Ola Joseph tried to stick with Mutz, but he scooped it around him. I mean, that's just a freshman being outclassed by a guy that's played a lot of basketball here. Patient, Fred Astaire-like with the footwork to find an advantage in an angle. 12 and eight for Mutz. Foul on Poteet. And this weekend's featured college football lineup on conference championship Saturday starts noon Eastern on ABC with the Dr. Pepper Big 12 title game. Kansas State TCU then for the American title UCF and Tulane. And then in primetime ACC championship game Clemson North Carolina then Sunday ESPN noon Eastern the exclusive reveal of the final CFP rankings. You'll be at the ACC title game, right? I will. In six degrees of separation, the legend Frank Beamer, son Shane Beamer over in South Carolina, has ruined all hopes for a CFP in the ACC. CFP appearance for Clemson is they went in there and ended a 40-game home win streak in Death Valley. And that legend right there, Frank Beamer, on hand to watch his son get it done. Look, I, I can only imagine what that feeling was like for father and son. No better man in the world than my father. Hope he gets to see me achieve something as cool as that one in that moment in his lifetime. That was awesome to watch. Amen. That was special. Poteet, short. He was falling away through the contact. Shoveled out for Collins to knock it down. over to Ola Joseph, drives off the shot fake, and on the floor, foul drawn by Ola Joseph. Again, I, I've been impressed tonight with Bazzilli's defensive effort. We know about the offensive skill set and the three-point ability. I've also been impressed with how he's put it on the deck. This young man is, is putting on an effort defensively that has to please Coach Young in terms of what he's doing out there. There's a commitment to that side of the basketball, that side of the court, and they wanted to see that. What's that do for the Hokie ceiling? Well, when you've got a guy who can guard alongside Mutz as your bookend bigs, and then you've got guys coming off like Kid and Poteet, provides a depth. I mean, this is a group that prides himself on defense. You're not gonna play for Coach Young unless you guard. Good block by Henley. Hey, he only played seven minutes in the second half in a very close one possession back and forth game Friday here. He's going to get time on the floor because he's so good offensively and, and he fits, you know, what this group likes to do under Coach Young. But when he guards, I mean, they got to keep him on the floor then. Battle runs down the Maddox miss and battle pushes. Nobody's going to like th that, that move from him. And then he's not back in position and gives one up. Get back, big fella, and guard. You create an advantage by trying to reach in the backcourt. Minnesota has not been able to get out and run very much at all. And that was their only hope. Generate turnovers, make this game a, a one where you can run a little bit, get some of those runouts. They did that early by forcing turnovers. That's been eliminated. And the Hokies are really guarding in the half court. Couture. Quick step by Cooper. Garcia went straight up. Cooper was there as well. And Minnesota claims the basketball on the other side. Just under eight to go in Blacksburg in the ACC Big Ten Challenge. I like that cop. 
Hey, look, coach knows some people just have all the luck. Anthony Black's got the hair, that he's hair. got the game. Some people are just blessed. But he's really exploded on the scene with the week he had during Feast Week. A volume guy, but an efficient one. Speaking of volume, 36 shots for Leaky Black? For Caleb Love? Excuse me. Caleb Love, yeah. thank you. You know what I meant. 36 shots for Caleb Love. You've That's unbelievable. That? I wish my man Leaky would take 36. <laughs> Love that guy. Caleb Love taking 36 shots is he's out of control. Out of control. And what did Vinick Bill Walton on the call for a four overtime game? It was a heck of a game. And look, Carolina is bumped down at 18th in the country. They're going to be just fine. They're one of the best teams in the country. Uh, two close losses, what, by combined seven points? They're going to be all right. Eric Fonts talking about Kansas. He, he was talking at halftime about Grady Dick. I mean, what an impressive freshman. Coach Self said he's the best shooter he's ever coached. You know how many guys Coach Self has had in terms of talent that have played underneath him? He is so smooth. Garcia banging and kicking. Battle comes up short again. Maddox the rebound. Ben Johnson said that to us today about Battle that maybe a little bit rhythm-wise offensively with his legs, he, he could sense that it was the first two games back. Yeah, you know, we asked him about the foot injury. He said it's not the injury itself. It's a battling back and conditioning. He's not all the way back in terms of rhythm and conditioning. And when that comes, he'll be more of a factor on the floor for the Gophers. Really enjoyed our visit with Jameson earlier today. Sharp young man. Yeah. Garcia spins that one out. Does stay at this end of the floor. How about Garcia, meanwhile, and how he fits with battle and fits with the Gophers in his first year? I think for me, it's Garcia understanding how tall he is, what length he truly possesses. He's 6'11", and I think understanding at 6'11", you're a matchup nightmare when you play a little three and some four. Use that to your advantage, and I don't think that's clicked with him yet. I'd like to see the motor bumped up a little bit more. The talent is there. I just think the mindset needs to elevate. Former top 50 recruit, first McDonald's All-American to play for the Gophers since Chris Humphreys about 20 years ago. On three short from Cooper. Talked to battle today. He said, yeah, I've known Dawson Garcia for so long. Same AAU organization. And during COVID, they worked out together nearly Tyler every Wall day. Tyler Wall as well. Uh, Wisconsin Badger, who's a standout. Those three really grinded together working out, developed a bond, and three very talented players. I'll tell you what, watching the Hokies, and I knew they were a superior team coming in, heavy favorites, double-digit favorites coming in, but does this feel like the seventh best team in the ACC to you? No. I don't know who votes on these things. <laughs> I don't get it. Good defense by Mutz. behind the likes of Florida State. Notre I think everybody's Dame. shocked by what's happening with Florida State right yep. now. And Coach Hamilton's too great of a coach for it to stay like that. Oh, big block by Ola Joseph on Mutz. I told you, he is bouncing. Spins on Basili. The freshman couldn't muscle it past Basili. Yeah, Leonard Hamilton dealing with suspension, with injuries, a lot that they've had to endure early on this season, their first eight games. And now you got to deal with Zach Eady on Wednesday. Basili, good job by Ola Joseph staying in front. Under five to shoot, Mutz to the baseline. Rolled off, and last touch, I think by Payne, and indeed it'll be. And I think they're right up there. I think Notre Dame could surge if they put it together. There's some old pieces there. There's some young talent. They need Marcus Hammond at the point guard spot. But I look at Notre Dame and Virginia Tech as two teams that could surprise. Mutz for two more. He's got 16 and nine for Virginia Tech. Does a great job of playing before the catch. He wins the battle before the basketball makes it to his hands. A lot of contact there. Now he does get black for the foul with Pharrell Payne. Mutz right here just catches high post. 
handoff. It's right back in. It's posted. He pushed off here. He prefers that because he has the ability to make it work. Payne got greedy, and Mutz makes him pay. That'll probably do it for him tonight. To the line, 21, Guerrero Payne. It helps to have guys like Mutz and Couture that have been here for so long that you know what you're going to get night in and night out with him. How about what Mike Young said to us today, that it's one of his career highlights to, at this point in their careers, Coach Mutz and Coach Couture because there is so much mutual respect between those three. And it's easy to see why. As much as he's loved coaching them, me working over at the ACC, I love covering them. Because when I speak with such high praise for the Hokies program, it's guys like that have played such an integral role over these first few seasons with Coach Young. They embody what he's about, and you know how I feel about Coach Young. Top 20, top 10, depending on who you listen to. <laughs> he's elite. That's all I'm saying. He's one of the elite coaches in college basketball. Rankings never do anybody justice. You're up there on my list of play-by-play guys. You're number one. <laughs> So I get Brian Custer in a couple days, then he yeah, becomes. Yeah, <laughs> number one tonight. Oh, the Joseph spinning. Again, can't work past Basili, but it's a Virginia Tech foul. Hey, Wednesday, another half dozen games in the ACC Big Ten Challenge on the Indiana Sonic Blockbuster. Ohio State and Duke in Durham, and then out of Bloomington, North Carolina and Indiana. I I'm curious to see two bounce backs from Duke and North Carolina, and it's not an ACC bias there, it's just going to, Duke kind of took on a couple losses, Carolina took on a couple losses. How are those groups gonna respond? Carolina is an old group. I expect them to have a better showing this early in response to some some uh, some pushback, as opposed to a Duke group that has a long way to go still, very young, 11 new faces. But you gotta go there and deal with Trace Jackson Davis, and, and, and the Simply Hall, Mike Woodson. Yeah. in that environment. Very good Indiana team. Big Ten has looked apart early on. And that is some really good freshmen out there. 19-point game under four to go second half. Virginia Tech trying to get to seven and one and kick off the ACC Big Ten Challenge with a win for the ACC. And Payne spikes Basili onto the Hokies bench. Look out. ESPN's exclusive presentation of college basketball is presented by Continental Tire, the smart choice in tires. Yeah, that one's still to come. Jeff Campbell, Chris Collins reunite up in Evanston. And the Big Ten gets its first home game here on night one of the ACC Big Ten Challenge. Here in Blacksburg, Virginia, alongside Jordan Cornette, Mike Monaco with you, our entire crew behind the scenes. And the Hokies have controlled this one after really the first 10 minutes of this game. Been very businesslike in the adjustment from the struggles early on to take care of the basketball. Settled in, played their game, took total control. Minnesota's number one, Joshua Ola Joseph. How about Joshua Joseph? He's got three. All right, so we talked about Northwestern. We've seen Minnesota here in action. You love Purdue. What else stands out to you in the Big Ten? I'm eager to watch Michigan State in a couple days. Michigan State very well could be a Final Four team. It's so early. You don't say any of that with confidence. When I say that, I say they're a really good basketball team and one of the better teams in the country. It's Tom Izzo. Uh, but they've got players on that squad. I'll get them in South Bend in two days. Indiana is a very good team. Purdue, I already said, is the best team in the country. I was always dangerous. I, I look at the Big Ten and say there's a lot of threats this year. When there wasn't one dominant team coming in, how about Illinois is another squad? Wisconsin. It's a loaded Big Ten once again. Now, Coach Ben Johnson and the Gophers aren't there yet. But as talking with Coach Johnson... Look, he's a go for it. He knows what it takes to win here. He knows what he has. He knows what he wants to do. He's been on some great staffs. He's the right guy. It's going to take time. It's going to take time. He's only got two scholarship players back who played last year on this year's team. He told us today Virginia Tech's a lot like Purdue, but when he says that, he says, I've got a guy and a half who have played Purdue before. Isaiah Enon, 6'10". Yep. That guy's in uniform. He's not hurt. He gets back from injury. 
That's a 6'10 two guard. That shrinks the floor. That changes a lot. The young guys got to get healthy. The young guys got to mature in this program. And the Gophers will start to come around. They're not there yet, but they'll get there under Coach Johnson. And Collins a miss. Yeah, you got Enan who suffered a torn ACL. Same knee that kept him out last year. And the way Ben Johnson put it to us today, he was really ascending before the injury. And then you got Parker Fox as well. Torn ACL for him too. He's now had injuries to both his knees the last couple of years and has yet to play for Minnesota since so transfer again. Isaiah's a different speaker. Watch how I talk about pain. You look at Isaiah, you look at pain. I, I like Henley and what he can be here. There's a core young group, but I, I'm gonna put it on battle and I'm gonna put it on Garcia. In the meantime, those guys have to come out there with a mentality that they're gonna go take hearts when they step on the floor. They've gotta be that. It's asking a lot. But for them to go win in a very difficult Big Ten, those guys have to go out there and hunt theirs. And quite simply, Second that didn't happen Minnesota, tonight. Zero, Taurus, Samuels. Back after the Hokies, 34, Lonjo, Hokies, Samuels. Six-point game, 6 points for battle on two of ten shooting. Five for Garcia on two of nine shooting. And again, Garcia, we were told at shoot-around today, under the weather, dealing with some flu-like symptoms. And for battle, just his third game back, from the foot surgery right before the season started. Checking in for the Hokies, number 10, Camden Johnson. Well, 2.16 to go, Mike Young goes deep into the bench. Camden Johnson, the walk-on you saw, enter the game. There he is, 10 and White, giving it off to the freshman Collins. On the dish for Kidd. Wanted to go back to that same shoulder. Kidd's going to play quality minutes. Come conference play, he's going to be a guy that factors in. He's going to be an important rotation piece. He's earned that right. Hokies shorthanded as well. They're still without their stud freshman top 50 recruit in the ESPN 100, Rodney Rice. And John Camden's got an ankle in. Hey, tomorrow, six more games in the ACC Big Ten Challenge. Yes, yes. On the ESPN app. Right there in the middle, that's Rodney Rice. Uh, the ankle surgery. He, he was moving around pretty good in shoot around and, and pregame tonight. Combo guard. Can play the one. I think he's probably better off at the one. Can play off the ball, but then when you go Couture, Padula, and Rice, that's a very strong perimeter. And with what Coach Young likes to do, spread you out, be able to attack you with space. Rice adds another element there in dimension. Crowd wants the walk on Johnson to trigger. Woo. On a scoop, too strong. Cleared by the Gophers. Carrington connects. Three points and takes a timeout with 112 to go here in this second half. We'll take it as well. And back to Flagstaff. your research to new heights. Sattva. Oh, we've been that for Coach Young. Full butt cheek says to me, job well done. <laughs> uh, you did the work tonight. Justin Mutz. It starts with Mutz. It starts with Couture. Padula, very talented. Bazilli, very talented. But these guys are the guys. Look at this. I mean, the guy's got three degrees, including two He's masters brilliant. already. He's brilliant. Basketball, it, look, he can make a lot of money doing this. He's going to make a lot of money doing anything. I don't know Mr. and Mrs. Mutz, but hat tip to you. Working hat on a bachelor's, not a doctorate. He said he did consider going for Dr. Mutz. It's brilliant. Would have been a lot to, to deal with in, in a basketball season. But he said at some point, he's going to call himself Dr. J. It's a necessity. <laughs> Dr. Mutz sounds cool, too. Whatever it is, he's going to be successful. And that's the fun part of covering collegiate athletics. People know him as number 25 on the Hokies and a great basketball player, but the stories about these special young men and women in the sport, being able to tell those stories is the coolest to me. One minute to play. One it's going to be way play. bigger what he does on the court, the impact he'll have on the world. Yep. Inside the final minute here at Castle Coliseum. Man, I Five love Blacksburg. I don't want to leave, man. This place has always been great to me. 
Ola Joseph on the reverse. This crowd's awesome. Anytime you come here. Dude, anytime you come here. I already like Metallica. I like him now. When I came for that first football game a few years ago, I started putting Metallica on my Spotify. I was like, place had me hype. We will see you at PK's post game. No, you won't. I'm going to sleep. Oh, good lob. Padula to Poteen in the final 20 seconds. You're, you're young and spry, bro. The night is still young. Not for me. I'm old and decrepit. Uh, your words, not mine. <laughs> Pain draws a foul. Not old, seconds. just a prep, probably. Not old. Yeah, we told you still coming up. Top of the hour. Second game right here on ESPN2 in this ECC Big Ten Challenge. Pitt at Northwestern. I apologize. These free throws matter. Out west. To the line, 21. East or south in Blacksburg. One for five at the strike tonight. And he's good on the first. Rookie from Cottage Grove, Minnesota. Makes both 12 point game. Ooh. And thrown away oh, wow. by Poteet. Ola Joseph with two more two at the cup. Good, number one. Yeah, that that point game Joseph. with three seconds you left. You hate to see it. You hate to see it. And now a held ball. It sticks with Virginia Tech with point eight left. And the Hokie faithful does not like the way Minnesota is approaching these final seconds. And that does it. Virginia Tech to win 67-57 over Minnesota. Mike Monaco, it's going to be with you, man. Virginia Tech made quite the statement here tonight. A balanced effort led by their older guys. Settled in late to get the job done. Guarded in the half court. Just a better team. Business like in how they handle things on their own floor. We are just getting started in the ACC Big Ten Challenge. For Jordan Cornette, our producer, Tom Schofield, our director, Eric.